We're having the same problem we've been having really for the last six, seven, eight trading sessions, and that is the market leadership is sort of petering out, and the, uh, the, the S&P, for example, is stalling around that 2,800 level. So take a look here. What has led us from the market bottom on December 24th? Uh, banks, semiconductors, home builders have been strong, energy stocks, industrials, and again, you see here today, flattish to slightly down uh, for those leadership groups. That's the problem, the market's stalling out uh, in general. Transports today, either side of positive or negative, let's saw, say that overall we're down another 20 points in the transports, but you see some of the uh, American Airlines uh, loves uh, on the upside. These have been weak recently. The railroads have been a little stronger and outperforming. Uh, they're down today. But overall, there's been a lot of concerns. We spent the last two days talking about the transports topping out. Uh, they rolled over a little earlier than some of the other ones, so truckers are down 7%. This is the last couple the weeks. Airlines are down 4%. The railroads, as I mentioned, holding up better. They're only down about 1%. Uh, people are concerned this might be presaging something, but my point is that the overall market has stalled out. So if you look since the last couple of weeks here, this is February 24th, the S&P 500 is flat. Semiconductors are flat. The Russell 2000, a big market leader uh, from the bottom on December 24th, is down 1%. Banks, which were up 20% on the year, have rolled over. They're down 1%. And the industrials, which is a trade play primarily, they're down as well. So it's not just the transports. It's the overall market has flattened out in the last week and a half. Why has this happened? Well, the, the question is, we have had a huge move. And how much more room really is there to rally on the facts as we are... It's as they are standing in front of us. So the facts are the Fed is pausing. A trade deal seems very likely, and the market is very aware of that. Is it 100% priced in or 90%? We don't know, but the vast majority seems so. We had great cheap pricing in the end of December, but that's gone away. The market is pricey right now. Depending on where your earnings estimates are, you're at 16 and a half or 17 times forward multiples. That's a lot on, on flat global growth. The leadership is a little overbought. We bought a lot of uh, stuff in on uh, technology stocks, and we've had that weak global fundamentals. I know I keep pounding away on it, but the OECD did it today. They gave us the same facts as we have been talking about all week. Look, they're taking down their numbers around the world, 3.3% GDP growth for the world uh, from 3.5. The U.S. is going down. China's going down. Germany, 0.7. They were at 1.6. They're really concerned about what's going on in Europe. And their key point here is what we've been saying all week on CNBC, which is even if the trade talks are favorable outcome, we still have the global economic. It doesn't go away. Here's what they said. High policy uncertainty, ongoing trade tensions, and a further erosion of business and consumer confidence are all contributing to the slowdown. In other words, it's not just getting rid of the China trade issues. There are other issues that are out there. They're talking about lots of stimulus going on in Europe. So that's why the market's stalling out. What we need to do is get better economic data, more stabilization in China, better stabilization in Europe, and then all of the earnings, downward earnings revisions we've been seeing, that will stop. That'll help the market move forward. Right now, still stalled around that 2,800 level.